uh, the way I'm, I'm teaching this God's nature preaching method is basically from any passage to find out God's action, God's nature. Find out about God first before find out about people. About God's nature and His, His grace and then and then explain why people don't you know accept this why people don't get have strength have this God's nature living in them and how we can do it so it, you can have a simple outline okay so Romans eight fifteen. for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out Abba Father so this verse says that we did not receive the spirit of bondage the Holy Spirit that we receive is not a spirit of bondage of slavery to, to uh, lead us to fear but we receive the spirit of adoption as children adoption means adoption as children by whom we cry out about Father so we receive the spirit of, of adoption that we have been adopted by God to be His children so we can cry out to Him, Abba Father. So we can come to Him with confidence. We are no longer slaves. We are not living under pressure. We are living uh, with joy and freedom as children. So we think about this question. What are the differences between the spirit of adoption, adoption and the spirit of bondage? Uh, now this is... Uh, so it's something we can think about when we notice these key words there. Uh, the spirit of bondage most people they are under pressure they're living guilt they have you know they uh, they accuse themselves they they think they are useless so this is spirit of bondage uh, that it's there's no freedom no joy it's under pressure and then spirit of adoption is that we are adopted as children into the kingdom of God we are adopted as children of God the Father and, and you think about this you think about the richest man in your country if he says to you I accept you to be my child you can come to my home and it becomes your home you can live here I have a bedroom for you you can eat here you can do things here you would say, wow, that's great, that's great. Now we have God the Father who says to us that we can have this spirit of adoption, that we are adopted as children. We can enter the kingdom of God and to be treasured by God and to be blessed by God. So I hope we say, wow, this is great, this is great. I can become children of God. I can enjoy Him. So when does God give us the spirit of adoption? Uh, uh, say about... Oh, it should be what? What does God giving us the spirit of adoption say about God's nature and grace? So what does God giving us the spirit of, of adoption? That He give us the spirit of, of adoption as children. What does it say about God's nature and grace? God's nature is that He has a fatherly nature. He wants to accept us as children. And He pour all kinds of blessings and grace into our lives because of His grace for us, because of His love for us. So what does crying out Abba Father imply? It imply that, that we can have a trusting relationship with God the Father, that we can cry out like children, like babies and say, Father, Baba, Father, Abba Father, that we can cry out in, in, uh, with freedom and joy. Now, I want to first s say this message uh, out before we go through the points, okay? If I'm going to preach on this, Romans 8.15 When we look at this passage, we compare here spirit of bondage and spirit of adoption. So we're looking, so we look at these two spirits and then we think about think about Christians, now non-Christians, they, they are under pressure. They they live with a spirit of bondage. And then even Christians, many Christians uh, don't live with freedom. They, they live like slaves. They always think of, they have to do this 
they have to do that. Now, for me, I have the motivation to serve God. I have the motivation to serve God. But I'm not under pressure to serve God. I serve God joyfully. I'm not serving God under pressure. Okay, now if we want to preach about this, we, we can say, you know, uh, we can start with this. When you think about God, do you think of a loving Father that you can just say, Father, I love you. Father, I adore you. I enjoy you. I like you. I'm so happy to be your child. And I know that you're happy with everything I do. Do we come to God like this? Or do we come to God and say, Oh God, I have sinned again. I am weak. I have I'm not done well. Please forgive me. I'm not worthy. I am very weak. Now do we come to God like that? Or do we come to God and say, Oh God, I have failed again. I feel very guilty. I dare not come to you. Those are the spirit of bondage. But we want to you know, have the spirit of adoption as children that we are like we are adopted to be the children of God that we can come to God and say God you have accepted me to be your father like you think about the richest man in your country say to you I accept you I adopt you to be my child you can come to my home and live there and you can come to me anytime you want to talk to me then you say wow that's great and now God says to us we have the spirit of adoption that we can come to God with freedom and joy and happiness. Okay, now, so that's God's nature. He has a nature of accepting us as His children. He has a fatherly heart. He, he uh, accepts us while we, were, uh, while we are sinners, while we are weak. So why do people have problem accepting God the Father as uh, uh, you know, a, a loving father. Why do people sometimes are under pressure? They under pressure. They are under pressure to serve God. Why is that happening? The reason is because many people, they, they are brought up in families that have a lot of pressure. Most people live under pressure. They from the childhood on, they are under pressure. Even after marriage, if you look at many marriages that people don't like to, you know, uh, they don't appreciate the spouse. They don't say to the spouse, uh, say, I love you all the time. They don't say that. They don't, they don't do things to make the spouse happy. They, they demand the, uh, the spouse to do something for them. And the, if the spouse doesn't do a good job, then they would be unhappy. So that happens to many people that they that they, when in a marriage, it's just a marriage of pressure. It's under pressure. They give pressure to the spouse, uh, and, and the spouse give pressure to them, and they give pressure to the children. Instead of saying, oh, you're my beloved child, you're my beloved spouse, I love you, I like you, and we can enjoy each other. When we know that we can enjoy like God like that, then we want to come to God. But many people don't have that spirit. Many people, when they grow up, they're always under pressure, under accusation. So, a lot of people live under ac accusation. So, they, it's hard for them to accept a total forgiveness and total acceptance. So, how can we have a spirit of adoption? Actually, we already have it. We just believe it. God has already given us a spirit that gives us freedom and joy. So when we praise God, we feel joyful and happy and strengthened. So that means the Holy Spirit is in us. We are children of God. So many Christians don't believe that because they, they think they're not worthy. But we now know that it's not because we are worthy. It's because God is love. So I can come to God and say, I know you are loving me. I know you are treasuring me. You want to do great things in my life. You want to raise up my life to a high level. Now, some people say, how do you know that? It's from the Bible. The Bible tells us that, that, that we receive the spirit of adoption, that we can cry out, Abba, Father. It's God's heart. It's God's heart that He remembers us all the time. He cannot forget it. Forget it. Even if a, 
a, a mother, you know, a mother will not forget a baby. Even if the mother forgets a baby, the Heavenly Father will not forget us. So we know that He is the perfect Father. He is full of love, full of grace, so we can come to God and say, I know you accept me. I know that you like me. I know that I am just like a child in your home. So, so in this way, then the people who listen to your sermon can say, wow, we can enjoy you. And then in our praise and worship, we can say, Oh, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I love you. Yes, because you first loved me. Father, you love me. You hug me. I love you. So we can sing with the people. Oh, we can come to God the Father as children. We can lean on His arms. We can enjoy Him. And we know that when we come to Him, He is very, very happy. He is happy with us. So that way, then we can, uh, well, in a message, we'll help the people to enjoy God as our Heavenly Father and to enjoy ourselves being children of God, that we can enjoy the Holy Spirit, the spirit of adoption as children. We have the spirit of adoption, that we uh, have been adopted by God the Father to be His children. So we are blessed. Hallelujah! So it's not just a mental message, but a message to assure people that when they repent and come to God, for sure God will accept them them and 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 bless them hallelujah okay so I, I demonstrate how to preach this message so that that way we all have this purpose now this is not the only way to have the sermon outline but this is a an outline that you can start with very simple first explain the message and then uh, what is God's nature and grace uh, in a passage or sometimes it's not in a passage Sometimes it's implied. And then, why do many people not have this God's nature in their lives? Why don't they don't live out this God's nature? And then, four, how we can live out this nature? How we can live out this nature with joy and freedom and uh, enjoyment, that we can enjoy God all the time. Okay? So, uh, here... I write this message theme. We can live with the spirit of adoption as God's children and not with the spirit of bondage as slaves. So we can live with the spirit of adoption as God's children and not with the spirit of bondage, no S, no S here, as slaves. The negative example of many people, you can start with the negative example. Many people don't live with the freedom and joy of children of God. They look at how they cannot reach God's standard and their shortcomings. Those so they say, I've failed God many times, I've sinned, I've done wrong, I I don't love God enough. They look at those those things. Those are real. But the point is, if we look at the negative things, we can never have strength from that. But we want to look at the positive things from God. God accepts me, even though I have many shortcomings, I have many sins, but when I repent, God will accept me and God will hug me in his arms. Like the prodigal son who, who comes home. Uh, the prodigal son comes home and uh, the father did not question him about the money. The father immediately accepts him. That is how you know, our father accepts us all the time. Okay? And then, um, so that's negative examples of people. And then, now, so that's something we can start with sometimes. It depends on the sermon. And then our Heavenly Father is full of freedom and joy and accepts us as children. So this is God's nature and grace. So He's full of freedom and joy and He accepts us as His children. First, God is full of freedom and joy. He wants us to feel loved as children. He sends us the Holy Spirit to make us feel at home with Him as children. So. God Himself is full of freedom and joy. He's a, a free God. He's a joyful God. 
he is full of freedom and joy and he enjoys he enjoy his life of course God enjoys his life he enjoys to be with his children he enjoys working in the lives of his children he enjoys drawing people to him he's a joyful God and he wants to feel loved he wants us to feel loved as children he wants us to to understand that he's a loving father he doesn't want us to live like slaves he wants us to to have confidence that we are his children and he sends us the Holy Spirit to make us feel at home with him as children so he sends us the Holy Spirit that we can uh, when we have the Holy Spirit and when we praise him we'll feel joyful and happy and strengthen hallelujah praise the Lord thank you father when we love God then we can experience his joy and peace that sh shows that God is happy with us God is the nature of a perfect father he is a family heart for all of us so he's the perfect father he he has a family heart he wants to have this close relationship with us third God draws us to become his children and feel at home as children so God draws us to, to come to Him, to believe in Him, and to be His children and feel at home as children. So these are uh, His, um, the God's nature and grace. He is full of freedom and joy. He, he wants us to feel loved as children, and He sends us the Holy Spirit to draw us to His home, to come as children. And two, God is the nature of a perfect Father, he has a family heart for all of us. And He draws us to become His children and feel at home. Now you might say, I have a problem thinking about this. So what you do, you think about that. Now you will look at the verse again. We did not receive the spirit of bondage, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So we see two pictures. Spirit of bondage, spirit of adoption. So, in order to explain uh, anything positive, we can explain the negative side. The negative side will show the strength of the positive side. When we explain the spirit of bondage, that people are under pressure, that people feel accused, they accuse themselves, they feel they are insufficient. Where you have this spirit of bondage, then they always live under fear. I once watched a uh, a part of a movie on television. I just saw the end of it. Uh, it was like this. There was a father who has uh, at least two sons. He likes the elder son, but he doesn't like the young uh, the younger son. Now maybe the youngest son has done something bad. And uh, when the father died, he left his money to the elder son and then he left one dollar to the younger son. The, the reason why he left one dollar to the younger son is to say to him, I don't like you. You have done wrong things. You don't obey me. You don't, you're not a good son. So you know, he, you know, he can choose not to give any money, but he chose to give one dollar. So if the son comes to get the money, it's a shame to get one dollar from the father. Now that is a spirit of bondage, both for the father and the son. The father is living with anger and frustration. So he cannot forgive his child. And he, even when he dies, he won't see the son anymore. He still wants to leave a bad impression to the son. He wants the son to remember his faults, all his uh, uh, wrongdoings. He wants his sons to feel like that. And because he dies, the son has no more chance to prove himself to him, to, to uh, build up a relationship with him again. So that the father has a spirit of bondage and he wants to give the spirit of bondage to people. And then the son is living under accusation and pressure. He, he feels not loved by his father. He feels rejected. He feels unhappy. So that's the spirit of bondage. But on the contrary, when we have 
the spirit of adoption. We can come to God the Father and say, I enjoy you, I love you, I like you, I enjoy you. So we can contrast. And then we can think of how we can change from the spirit of bondage to a spirit of adoption. And think of why people are living uh, with the spirit of bondage and how God the Father has a pure spirit of adoption. So we can think from different angle. We can think from the transition from spirit of bondage to spirit of adoption. We can uh, think of why people live uh, with the spirit of bondage and why some people live with the spirit of adoption and how we can change and how good it is to change. So we can think different ways and then jot down notes. Jot down uh, notes in, before we write the whole sermon. Just write down a few points and try to think of different points that we can write about to describe this uh, spirit of bondage and spirit of adoption. So this is what I do. I, I would write down notes to help me to think and then after I have the notes and then I will I will organize them into a, a message okay the negative example and then God's grace and why many Christians feel like they are slaves why because of sin all people are enslaved by Satan and by legalism what is legalism legalism is trying to please God by doing good by think they, that they can earn God's love by doing good it's, and also by showing that they are good enough by comparing with people it's basically is showing pe that they are good by obeying the law by just by obeying instead of by grace that by grace we are forgiven by grace we are saved by grace we can enjoy God Okay, and uh, so because of sin, all people are enslaved by Satan and by legalism. People grow up under human pressure. It is hard for them to believe in free grace because people are, live under human pressure. For instance, when I grew up, I'm the eldest son in my family. But everything, every time, whenever there is anything wrong, my parents always point the finger at me. They always accuse me. And I'm the one who is most responsible. I'm the one who, do, who does everything well, but they just have the spirit of accusation. So I was under a lot of pressure from them. But uh, after I became a Christian, I want to love them and show that I care for them. I, I uh, treat them nicely instead of uh, using their own ways, their, their way of accusation on them. I, I treat them with, you know, uh, with uh, grace and treat them nicely and many Christians just look at the law when they read the Bible they filter out the grace so when they read the Bible they just see we have to read the Bible we have to repent we have to obey and preach the gospel and they don't look at the grace for instance when Jesus said go make disciples of all nations at the end he said and I'll be with you always to the end of the ages so that's the promise but people don't look at that People just say, I have to preach the gospel. So there are many passages that God always promises things and they don't look at the promise. For instance, Jesus said, uh, the father take care of the birds and your hair and the lilies of the field. So you don't have to worry. So people just look at, don't worry. And they don't see that God takes care of the birds and the lily. There's so many birds in the world. There's so many sparrows. Why does God take care of sparrows? There's so many of them. Doesn't God, you know, does God have too much time that He takes care of the sparrow? But God has the nature of love. He has the ability to care about every sparrow. And He chooses to take care of all the animals and all the people. That is Him. He is a loving God. So we motivate people not to worry by telling them that God cares about the 
birds and the sparrows and the flowers and your hair. So that is how Jesus motivates us not to worry. But people very often, they just say, don't worry, don't worry. And they just take the law part out. The law part means what people do. Now, when I mean law, I don't mean Moses' law. I mean all the law in the Old and New Testament, except for the ceremonial law, like offering the sacrifice. We don't offer the living sacrifice now. Uh, the Sabbath day and, uh, and the feasts in the Old Testament. That Now, some people say we have to obey those. Now, you can follow those if you want to, but the Bible doesn't say we have to obey those. And actually, Paul said in Galatians that, that because you always pay attention to the feast, I worry for you. That you think that by keeping the feast, you, you, uh, you have extra blessings. So, the ceremonial laws in the Old Testament are not binding on us. Even though if you want to, you can follow that. Uh, but Christians don't offer living sacrifice because Jesus already died for us. But we obey the moral laws in Old Testament and in the New Testament. That we obey everything God tells us to do. So many people just look at the law, what they have to do, and they filter out the grace. They don't see the grace. So we want to look at the grace, the motivation. In every verse, in ma many verses, there is a grace there, but also sometimes it's not there, but it's implied. It is implied. So we can, now I will go through some of those passages in the future that doesn't talk about God's grace directly. And then we'll look from the Bible. What does the Bible say about God's grace there? Okay, and many people think that piety is giving pressure to other people to obey. Now, some people think that piety means that I, I tell you, you have to pray, you have to repent, you have to obey and do this and do that. And they think this is piety. Piety is mainly building up a good relationship with God, trusting in God, enjoying God. Uh, the, the main thing about piety is trusting in the love of God, trusting in the goodness of God, and then we want to obey Him, we want to serve Him, we want to glorify Him. So that's the main thing of piety. Piety is not just obeying. Christianity is not just about obeying. Christianity is about having a close relationship with a loving Father that we can enjoy Him, we can be strengthened by Him, that we can uh, glorify Him and serve Him. So it's not just about obeying, it's about a living relationship with a loving Father. So um, I hope that you see that uh, it's motivation by grace. Now we do have the reminder from the law, but it's the secondary. Okay, and then B, the Heavenly Father is full of freedom and joy and accepts us as children. So this is God's grace. He is full of freedom and joy. He accepts us. He is full of freedom and joy. He wants us to feel love as children. And the Holy Spirit makes us feel love uh, at home with Him as children. And He is the nature of a perfect Father. And He draws us to become His children and feel at home. Now we just look at that. And why many Christians feel like they are slaves? Because they grow up. They grow up under the law and under Satan and under criticism. They just look at the law and filter out the grace. And many people think piety is just giving pressure to other people to obey. D. How we can live as children and not slaves. First, we believe what the Bible says that God gives us the spirit of adoption. We believe that. The Bible says we are adopted as children, so we live as children and examine our past experiences of being under pressure before and after we believe. Discern in what ways we are like slaves and ask God for ways to change that to the mentality of God's children. So one way, now you might say it's hard for us to think of that. So you might think of other ways how we can change from the spirit of bondage to the spirit of adoption 
So one way here is to examine our past experiences uh, of being under pressure, under pressure from the family, from the school, from co-workers, from church members. Uh, so we examine our past experience and discern in what way we are like slaves. Do we live like slaves? Do we uh, do things out of pressure? Or do we do things out of willingness and, uh, and with joy? So, and ask God to, for ways to change that to the mentality uh, of God's children that we become, have the mentality, mentality of God's children. We are loved by God. We are appreciative of God. God wants to do great things in my life so I can enjoy God. I, I can enjoy life. I can enjoy being myself. And then three, appreciate ourselves more than more when follow God's way to give us more freedom. So we appreciate ourselves more when we follow, there's a we here, when we follow God's way to, to give us more freedom. So when we appreciate ourselves, when we are, are following God, do we appreciate ourselves? And this gives us more freedom that when we say, I'm loving God, I'm obeying God, I'm praying to God, and God is happy with me. So I can have more freedom. I can have more joy. Thank you, Lord. I can have more joy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I can have more joy. I can enjoy you because I have tried to come to you. Now, that is not being proud. We're not being proud. We're, we're not proud that I have obeyed God. It's nothing to be bo to boast about. But we say, I change I, I love God because God has changed my life and I'm happy that I've changed and I, I glorify God and God is happy with me so I can appreciate myself obeying God and following God. Now we look at this passage. Now I'm, I'm demonstrating how to preach on this. 